In this video, we're going to be going over free response question number two. So in this problem, we're given this graph, which has these two functions on it. And the functions are defined as f of x equals ln of x plus three and g of x equals x to the fourth power plus two times x to the third. The graphs of f and g shown in the figure above intersect at x equals minus two. So that's right here and x equals b, which is right here where b is greater than zero. So our first problem, problem A, is finding the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of F and G. So that would be this space here. The first thing I would suggest with this problem is identifying which of the two graphs represents F and which of the two graphs represents G. So just using my understanding of, so this is G of X here, where it's got those valleys and then at X equals zero, it has sort of what looks like almost like a cubic, whereas ln of x or f of x, as it's defined in the problem here, has a sort of gradual increase right, that we typically see in log functions. Identifying that is really, really important. The next thing we need to identify is what to actually, how to actually figure out the area of the region. So we know that f of x is on top of g of x, right? So between minus two and some value b, f of x is always on top of g of x. So we could say that the area between the two should equal f of x minus g of x. And then of course we need to take the integral of that from minus two to b to actually get the area. Let's go ahead and figure out what b is. That's our next step. So then we can actually, you know, plug this into our calculator and get an answer. We know that minus 2 is one of the bounds of the area, but now we actually need to find the other bound. So the way that we can find this is you'll notice that the two functions intercept at that point b. So what we can do is we can just set f of x equal to g of x and solve for x. So that would be ln of x plus 3 is equal to x to the fourth power plus 2 times x to the third. So if we plug that into our calculator, we'll see that x equals 0 0.781975. And so that means that this is our b. This is where they intercept. And if you kind of fact check it, it, it seems reasonable that this would be 0 0.7819, blah, 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 because it's like pretty close to one, but it's in between zero and one, okay? So we found our B. Now we have all the, all the pieces that we need to figure out our area. So our area is equal to the integral from minus two. So that's our lower bound. That's, our, that's where we intercept the first time to b, which we've determined as 0 0.7819, blah, blah, blah. And then within that, we're gonna be using our area equation, which is f of x minus g of x, f of x minus g of x, get our d of x. Then if we just plug that into our calculator, we're gonna get that the area of the region is 3.604. And that is our final answer for part a. Moving on to the next problem, it says for minus one, minus two is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b, let h of x be the vertical distance between the graphs of f and g, is h increasing or decreasing at x equals minus 0 0.5? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so we're defining h of x as the space between f of x and g of x. And we want to know specifically at minus 0 0.5, is that increasing or decreasing? So how do we find whether something's increasing or decreasing? Well, we, we take the derivative of it, okay? So um, if we're defining h of x to be f of x minus g of x, right? Remember, it's the vertical distance between the two graphs. Now we need to find actually the derivative of that. So if we take the derivative of this side, we're gonna have to take the derivative of the other side as well. What this looks like is it's just gonna be the derivative of f minus the derivative of g. And then since we're actually given a point, we can just plug that into our h prime. So minus 0 0.5 is equal to f prime <coughs> minus 0 0.5 minus g minus 5. If we plug all of this into our calculator, we're going to get minus 0.599-ish. Now we can use this information to determine whether it's increasing or decreasing. Okay, so remember that if this is a negative value, if the rate 
of the vertical distance is a negative value, that means it's going to be decreasing. Okay, so we can write that out. Because h prime of minus 0 0.5 is less than 0, h is decreasing at x equals minus 0 0.5. If you just left left it at that, you didn't write out this sentence, you probably wouldn't get full points. The reason why is because you need to connect the dots here a little bit and say the rate is less than zero, which means it's decreasing at x equals minus 0 0.5. And if you kind of, if you take a look at the graph, you can kind of gut check that by saying, well, yeah, the distance between f of x and g of x between these two points seems like it's decreasing. But make sure you're backing it up with actual math and you're not just looking at the graph and saying, well, it looks like it. intuition isn't always correct. Math is. All right, moving on to problem C. The region enclosed by the graphs of F and G is the base of a solid. Cross sections of the solid taken perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Find the volume of the solid. Okay, so with this problem, we're saying that we're taking these cross sections out of our graph kind of imagine that coming out you into the z axis we just have a bunch of these squares they don't really look like squares but we have a bunch of these squares between the two functions and we need to find the the volume of the of the, of the solid so basically what we want to do here is first we need to determine what the area of these squares are so remember area of a square area of square is equal to, you know, just whatever one side is times itself, so squared, where this is the side length of one side. And since it's a square, these are going to be the height and width of a square is going to be the same. So when we are talking specifically about the squares that are formed between these two functions, you'll notice that our width is going to be our width or our height, let's just call it our, our side length is going to equal f of x minus g of x, right? So if we're you're imagining this square like this, you can imagine that one side length of the square is between these two graphs. So if we wanted to find the area of that square, it would just be f of x minus g of x squared, okay? So the area of our square would be f of x minus g of x and then all of that squared so that's that's our area okay but remember that we're being asked for the volume of the solid so now we also need to take the integral of this area and that would be from those exact two same endpoints at which the two functions intercept so that would be from minus 2 to 0 0.782 blah 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 whatever okay so if you wanted to plug this into our calculator, this would be the same thing as doing ln of x plus 3 minus x squared plus 2x to the third, all of that squared dx. Since this is a calculator problem, make sure you're not actually evaluating this on your own. So what we're going to get is 5.340 as our final answer. That is the volume of the solid. Moving on to part D, it says a vertical line in the xy plane travels from left to right along the base of the solid described in part C. The vertical line is moving at a constant rate of seven units per second. Find the rate of change of the area of the cross section above the vertical line with respect to time when the vertical line is at position x equals minus 0.5. So there's a whole lot of information in this problem, so let's go ahead and break it down. So it's saying a vertical line in the xy plane. So let's see, what would that look like? So if we wanted to visualize this line within the xy plane, so remember the xy plane is like this, where x is on the bottom, y is on the top, and there's some sort of line that's just vertical within it, that it's moving this direction, and it's at the base of the solid. So you can kind of visualize it as it's just it just keeps moving like this and this and this and this and we have this solid sort of like looks something like that where it's just traveling alongside the bottom of it and we're trying to figure out 
the area of the cross section above the vertical line. So that would be the area here. How, how is that area changing as the vertical line is moving through the xy plane? This sounds like it's going to be a related rates problem. So let's go ahead and see what rates we can relate to one another. So traveling from left to right, so it's saying that the vertical line is moving from left to right at a constant rate of seven units per second. So that sounds like it's going to be dx of dt is seven units per second. And we're given that x is gonna be minus 0 0.5 that we're gonna be trying to find. What the problem is actually trying to get us to solve is the rate of change of the area of the cross section above the vertical line. So that means that our end goal ultimately is to find dA of dt. But right now we have dx of dt and we have an x. So we can use that same concept we used in the last problem that the area of our cross sections is equal to f minus g of x squared. We can use that and um, apply some related rates to find dA of dt, all right? So basically what we're just trying to find is the derivative of our area with respect to time. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of our area. So we would put that two down. So now we have two f of x minus g of x. And then since this is the chain rule, we're also gonna be multiplying this by the derivative of f of x minus the derivative of g of x. Then don't forget your d of x of t. So now we have dA of dt, and we've, re we've now related our area to time. So we can go ahead and plug in x equals minus 0 0.5, and dx of dt equals seven units. So dA of dt is equal to two times f of minus 0 0.5, minus g of minus 0 0.5, all of that times, the derivative at minus 0 0.5 of f minus the derivative at g of minus 0 0.5 times 7. And then, you know, go ahead and just plug all this into your calculator again. We're going to get that it's minus 9.272. That is our final answer for this problem. That is the rate of change of the area of the cross section above the vertical line with respect to time at this position x equals minus 0 0.5. So hopefully that helps you out with these problems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.